What is up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Tyler Goes Fishing. I'm Tyler and you know it, I'm going fishing. So in this episode, I'm gonna try out on camera for the first time this awesome new rod and reel I got. It's Big Catfish Fever Rod, uh, Pen Squall 20. It's the biggest rod I've ever owned and the most expensive. And uh, I'm gonna try to catch some uh, catfish today or whatever will bite, maybe some bowfin or bass. Got myself some live minnows there, store-bought. I've never used store-bought live bait before besides night crawlers. Got myself a float rig tied on. I kind of made this one out of a foam ball. We're gonna see if it works or not. If not, I got balloons, so that's we're gonna try that. I, I know I've used balloons before and it, it, it's worked, so I know they work. So anyways, let's get fishing. All right, so I made this thing just out of like a thing I bought at the arts and crafts store, just a foam ball. Uh, you know, hopefully it works. Got myself a little, what is this, 3 8 ounce or it's half ounce weight, bead, hook, big hook, got for the live bait. Up about maybe two feet, got an, a big old swivel with another bead on it. That way the, the bobber should theoretically go up and down. So the bait should hang out around two feet under the surface. Hypothetically, it's worked in the past for me. I've, I've tried this out a couple times so far off camera. Anyways, let's try one of these minnows. Hey, little fellers. I've used, uh, I used creek chubs last week off camera and it did very well live bait. I was only able to use two of them. So I went to the store, bought these minnows, extra large. And we'll see if they work. There we go. Hopefully that's catfish candy, or bowfin candy, or bass candy. I do have this boulder in my way, so hopefully that doesn't become too much of a problem. Oh, I nested a little bit. That's my inexperience right there. Well, the current is moving so slowly in this spot that like the bobber is just sitting still, which is kind of nice and it's working, which is good. Nice to know the foam little circle, foam little ball that I poked a hole through was working. Oh, y'all see that? Something jumped over there. Oh, something's going out there. Ooh. Something bit at it right over there. All right, so for after about 30 minutes, I finally got a bite in this guy. He looks, well, he's a little beat up maybe on the tail. It looks like he's a little beat up. Okay, well, I got a bite right about there. It actually did take the big foam bobber underneath the water for a hot second. So finally some excitement, huh? From what I understand about float fishing, you just gotta keep your hands down the rod. Cause you never know when that bobber's gonna go under and something's gonna take off. Also, I'm not using circle hooks, uh, circle hook, I'm using a uh, octopus hook. So I need to be able to set the hook faster. I'm definitely inexperienced when it comes to this type of fishing. Ooh, that was a bite, did y'all see that? Both of those bites have come right there off of the edge of the uh, grass. I think some of this vegetation is becoming a problem. It's so shallow over here, which is why I'm using a float rig, but I think the vegetation is just catching the, the fish. How you doing, fella? Nice, yeah, still kicking. Look at that. Yeah, this is what I was suspecting, just getting caught up in these weeds. Well, as the saying goes, go big or go home. And I use, using a decent sized bait, uh, but only gotten two small bites on it. Even though it's only two feet of leader, it's still getting caught up in like the weeds. And uh, it, it's, it's really slowing down the progress of this float because it's going down the river, then it'll just stop. It's not enough for me to snag off. It's just slightly getting caught up in the weeds. And then I have to pull it out for it to continue on. And then it gets stuck and I have to pull it out. Um, Again, only two bites. What I think I might do is put on something a little bit less intimidating. And by intimidating, I mean less big. So I'm gonna load this hook up with a night crawler. I brought night crawlers too. You guys know how much I love night crawlers, so. Let's try that. 
I'm actually going to stuff two night crawlers on this thing because these night crawlers are kind of small. This is kind of just an experiment. Maybe the catfish will like these guys a little bit more than that big old, big old extra large minnow. Hopefully the gigantic hook doesn't scare them. It shouldn't. Catfish don't usually care about that kind of thing. I'm going to aim for the only spot I've actually had a bite which is right along this grass line here. Ooh, there we go. There we go, got something, guys. It's not very big, it's not very big. It's a cat. Oh, get out of the rock. This is what I was worried about, is that dang rock. Woo Looks like a channel. Lift you up here, buddy. Chill, bro. There we go. Not a bad channel, really. Finally, we got something, though, right? And I had, like, second cast with the night crawlers, I got it. Maybe this is the guy was what was going after my live bait, my my minnow. Well, finally, I'm able to get one after about an hour. Definitely not the beast that can be in these waters, but beat the skunk today, huh? Like second cast with the night crawlers after an hour of using the live bait. Sometimes you downsize, you get on a fish, right? <laughs> All right, let's get him back in. Nice. Boom. Finally. Finally. He took both of the night crawlers though, it looks like. And I have to say, uh, with this big ass rod and reel, it is super easy to reel that sucker in. It was like nothing. It was like I was reeling in a, a bluegill or something. Uh oh, this time, guys, I may have actually snagged it on a rock or something. It's too shallow here. I mean, that's the whole point of using a float rig, though, right? It's for shallow water? Oh, well, you know. Snags happen, though, right? The only thing is, this is a 40 pound test. This is a pain in the ass to snap off. That is such a pain in the ass to break, dude. Bye-bye, float. I hope you're biodegradable. My apologies, Mother Nature, if you're not. Eh, I lost the whole rig. Oh, look, the duck's gonna go explore what it is. Duck, it's just styrofoam. You can't eat it, duck. Duck, you can't eat it. Ducky. He's going right for it. You're gonna be sadly disappointed, bro. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I broke off, but you know, that's how it is. Uh, I don't really feel like tying a whole nother float rig back on right now. Uh, mostly because like it's not working too well in this location after like over an hour, hour and a half now, something like that. But uh, I, I did beat the skunk, got myself a nice little channel. Uh, I keep seeing things break in the surface of the water. I don't know what they are, if they're bass or panfish or whatever. I got two other rods with me. I might as well try to see if I can catch anything else. So let's see if we can catch something else. Holding a normal bait caster after holding that heavy thing for like an hour and a half, this feels like nothing. Anyway, it's got a whopper plopper on there. Maybe a largey or a smallie today will want to uh, join in on the fishing fun today.
Oh, there we go. Bite. Fish. It's a smallie. No, it's a largie. It's pretty fatty. Pretty fat largie. Look at this guy. Nice, bro. This is a solid bass, bro. All right, look at the chubby little belly on him. Nice color on him, man. Like the nice green shine to it. Just a little guy, but healthy. Happy to have you on the show. I'll let you go. Woo! Oh, no, you ran right into the dirt, friend. Nice. Two species. Ah, that feels good. Get a nice bass off top water. It's a heavily overcast day, so top water might be a ticket for today. Who knows? It only took like nine minutes to catch that fish off the waffle flopper, so my hopes are pretty high right now. Oh my god, another one right there. Do you see that? He bit it right there, dude. Literally after oh my god, yes. That's back-to-back -back bass, guys. This one's much smaller, but Dude, I was just getting done saying I got a good feeling. Oh, I just got it done saying I had a good feeling. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Dude, second bass. This guy's beat up. You see, he's got he got like some some marks on him. That's nice, dude. Back to back largies. Nice. Am I recording? Yes, I was. Okay, good. That's pretty dope, huh? The same stretch of water right here on the Wappa Plopper. All right, so I only had uh, a limited amount of time that I could be out here, uh, which is unfortunate because it's a beautiful day out. So today was a nice trial run of my big new uh, uh, pen squall and big catfish fever rod. Uh, like I said, biggest and most expensive rod I ever had. Uh, I did uh, have two trial runs off camera that were way more successful than today. I caught a very nice flathead catfish and a very nice blue catfish. But I had a wonderful time outside today. I had got the channel catfish and two bass on the Whopper Poppers back to back, which was pretty exciting. Anyways, time to go. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Until next time, guys.